Well, a couple of animations. Earwig and the Witch, which is a digital co-production between Studio Ghibli, the great Studio Ghibli, and uh, NHK, the Japanese Broadcasting Corporation, based on the novel by Diane Wynne-Jones, directed by Goro Miyazaki, son of uh, Hayao Miyazaki. And it is a digital animation, follows the adventures of a young girl who, in early on in the film, is left at a children's home by her flame-haired mother. Here's a clip. Did you enjoy our fun outing? Good, because we're here now. You'll like it here. Every room is spick and span with tons of sunshine from all the huge windows. And their shepherd's pie is really good. Listen, you have to stay here for now. You mustn't go anywhere else. And the rest is up to you, okay? Earwig. Who is then renamed Erica is adopted against her will by Bella Yaga and Mandrake. Mandrake voiced by Richard E. Grant in the English language dub, and Richard E. Grant has fun with that. The thing about this is that if it's you know if it's a Ghibli movie and it's Goro Miyazaki, I actually like Goro Miyazaki's previous film. I I liked uh, Tales from Earthsea, although that you know had quite a rough ride. You expect so much more than this. What's remarkable about this is just how not remarkable it is. The story is very sort of perfunctory. The animation, you know, in an age in which you have Pixar animation just looks kind of rather ordinary. It just looks like any other CG film. And it's it, it feels oddly lackluster, which is just surprising because because of the, the caliber of, you know, where it comes from. So it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's nothing like as good as it ought to be, and certainly nothing like as engaging or exciting or magical as it ought to be. Despite all the stuff that's going on, there's no sense that you know that there's any kind of that there's any magic happening on screen. Now compare that to uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, which is you know Japanese anime. There's a popular manga and then a TV series. This outperformed the likes of Spirited Away, became Japan's uh, highest grossing movie, domestic hit and international hit. Most of the action plays out on this eternal train where our heroes are engaged in battles with demons, both in this world and in the dream world. So it's kind of like a sort of anime version of, uh, you know, of Inception. It's got scenes of fairly full on fantasy violence, including this kind of recurrent motif in which in order to awake from a dream, a character has to kill themselves, which is, you know, which is all animated exactly as it should be. And the interesting thing about it is that I thought at the beginning, OK, I'm not familiar with the source material. I'm finding it hard to get up to speed. But once, you know, once it gets going, it moves along at such a pace and it's so kind of uh, it's got such a lot of energy to the action. I was completely swept up in it. And it was weird because seeing these two things back to back, I thought that what I would do was really like Earwig and actually not connect with Demon Slayer. And it was completely the other way around. Demon Slayer, I found it exciting and, you know, interesting and fun to watch. And Earwig, I found disappointing. So there you go. You, it's, it's like Peter Rabbit 2. You don't know before you watch the film.